Okay, welcome to water-based fire protection systems, an overview of sprinkler and standpipe systems for pump operators. We're going to talk a little bit today about sprinkler systems and standpipe systems. Um, two basic sprinkler systems that we deal with are wet systems and dry systems. Wet sprinkler systems, as the name implies, is, are usually always wet with water, and a dry system has air. Dry systems are found in areas that are prone to freezing. This is a picture of a 4 inch shotgun wet system. Uh, what we can see here is we have a drain valve, we have a pressure gauge that tells us what the pressure is on the system, and we have a flow switch that goes back to the fire alarm system. One thing we don't see in the picture is we don't see a shutoff valve uh, for the water supply. It's, at, it's out of frame. This is a dry pipe system. Here is the check valve, the dry check valve. Uh, there's a clapper that sits in here. Uh, when the system activates, the clapper go, comes up, locks open, uh, water enters the system. Um, when we deal with a dry pipe system, a service provider needs to come out uh, to restore the system. They'll take this plate off. They'll have to physically reset the clapper valve in place. Um, things you see here, we have a OS and Y valve to shut the water off. Um, we have a pressure gauge that's telling us what the water pressure is on the street side of the system. This is an air pressure gauge. This is telling us what the air pressure is on the system itself. This other piping over here goes back to the air compressor. We have an air compressor that um, constantly maintains a specific air pressure on the system. This is a fire department connection. So you as the pump operator are going to be looking for the fire department connection. Connect up to that. Um, you may see some signage on, above or near the fire department connection. Uh, it may tell you what areas of the building the sprinkler services. If you do see a, a signage like this you need to contact the incident commander and just advise him that the building is not fully sprinklered but only certain areas of the building are. Other things to look for uh, when you're hooking up to the fire department connection obviously the fire department connection right here. These are wall post indicator valves they're there for you to shut the sprinkler system down from the exterior. Uh, you don't, do not have to enter the building. However, in order to drain the system down through the drain valve, someone will have to go in and open up the drain valve. Fire pumps. Uh, this is a picture of a fire pump installation. Fire pumps are put into buildings uh, in order to meet the requirement the hydraulic requirement for the sprinkler demand. Uh, that means that the water pressure out in the street is not high enough to meet the requirements for the sprinkler system so the building owner has to install a fire pump to boost the pressure that's coming in from the street. So in uh, this illustration, this picture, um, we see a fire pump installation. One important thing, there's always going to be some pressure fluctuations in the system so if the pressure starts to dip, we don't want the fire pump coming on. So what they do is they put in a jockey pump. This jockey pump maintains constant pressure on the system until the pressure drops enough that would say from a uh, sprinkler head activation. So one sprinkler head activating would cause enough pressure drop that would cause the fire pump to come on. So this over here is the fire pump. Uh, very similar to the pumps that we use on our apparatus. This would be the fire pump motor. All right. This is what uh, powers the fire pump and it's a big electric motor. Over here we have zone valves uh, that go up to different uh, areas of the building to supply water to the sprinkler system. If you are dealing with a fire pump, uh, once you get the fire department connection hooked up and get water into the building and start pumping, um, it is okay to send somebody in, if it's safe, to shut the fire pump off. Uh, we don't want the fire pump running 
um, once you're hooked up to the fire department connection and pumping. Things to look for. Here's our fire department connection. Okay, this over here is a test header. This is only here to test the fire pump. So if you see something that looks like this, it's telling you, hey, there's a fire pump in the building. Do not hook up to it. It's only there to test the fire pump on an annual basis. Every one of these valves is good for 250 GPM. So in this case, we have four 250 GPM valves, so that tells us that there's a 1,000 GPM fire pump in the building. But again, it may only, may only be rated at 40 or 50 PSI, whatever the pressure is um, needed to uh, meet the hydraulic demand of the sprinkler system. So again, if you see something like this, go ahead, hook up to the fire department connection, get the needed pressure into the system, and then go in and shut the fire pump off. Uh, this is a dry standpipe. It's on a parking garage, so there's no water in it. So you as the pump operator have to supply water. So the best way to do that is park the engine at a hydrant, hook up to the hydrant, stretch a 3 inch or 2 and a half inch line to the fire department connection, get the first line in operation first, get water into the system, then go back and stretch a second line. Some rules of thumb for pumping to sprinkler and standpipes, pretty simple. If we're dealing with a sprinkler system, we just want to pump 100 to 150 PSI into the fire department connection. If we're dealing with a standpipe system, or if we're dealing with a combination system and we know we're going to be using a standpipe, we want to pump 150 to 200 PSI into the fire department connection. Uh, sometimes you'll see signage for combination systems. It's basically going to tell you that that fire department connection is servicing a different area of the building. It may be only servicing a standpipe, it may be servicing just a sprinkler, uh, it may be servicing only certain areas of the building. So uh, just be cognizant that if there's signage on or near the fire department connection, you take a look at it so you know what area of the building you're pumping to. This, this mainly pertains to uh, larger buildings. We deal with standpipe systems. Prior to 1993, the, if it was a required standpipe system, the pressure at the topmost riser needed to be 65 PSI. This requirement was based on the fact the, that the fire department was going to use 100, 100 feet of 2.5 inch hose line plus a smooth bore nozzle with an inch and eighth tip which flows 265 GPM. So this would give them the, uh, the required flow off of the standpipe system. Um, new systems after 1993, the requirement is 100 PSI at the most remote riser. But if you're dealing with a standpipe system, don't rely on the street pressure for the standpipe. Go ahead, hook up to the standpipe system get your pressure 150 to 200 PSI into the system uh, for the hose line that's going to be operating off the standpipe. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, here's my email. Uh, contact me with your question. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks.